If you've been watching the Tour de France so far, then you may have seen the riders taking on bags like this from people stood at the side of the road, roughly halfway through each stage. They're called musettes and they're full of food. The reason for it is it means the riders don't have to start each day's stage with their pockets jam-packed full, bursting with all the food that they'd need for the day. In essence, they contain the rider's lunch. In this video, we're gonna go through exactly what is in a typical musette. We're also gonna explain why it's there and show you how to make some of the special things that the pros eat, like rice cakes. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to GCN if you haven't already, and also click the little bell icon as it'll give you a notification when we upload a video. And well, it's free and it helps support the channel. Here is our GCN musette, and I'm gonna put everything in it, starting with the biggest item, which is bottles. Typically, you'll find two bottles in a musette, or bidon is what they're called if you're French, and this means that when the riders take their musette, they'll get rid of the bottles that are on their bike, which means that if you're after a pro water bottle as a souvenir, a good place to go is to hang around in or just after the feed zone at a pro race. There are loads of different things that you can put inside bottles, and these will be tailored for the individual riders, depending on their personal preference, but also the demands of a stage. So you can just have plain old water in there, and a lot of riders do. You can also use energy powders, such as these from our friends of the channel, Enovit. They come in either sachets or tubs, and they allow you to rehydrate with all the essential minerals, but also uh, get in that fuel as well and that carbohydrate for the stage. Something else we've seen as a bit of a trend, uh, which we noticed at the Giro, is some riders actually have protein in some of their bottles. And this will typically be on a flat stage where for someone who's a grand tour contender, this is almost like a recovery day for them. And so they'll have a bit of protein in one of their bottles at some part during the stage, just to help that recovery process. Personally, I like to have water in one of my bottles and then some energy powder in the other one. So that's what I've got, and they're gonna go in the musette. Next up is energy bars. Now one of the great things about energy bars is that they contain quite a lot of carbohydrates in a relatively small volume, meaning, well, they don't take up a huge amount of space in your pocket. Now they come in all sorts of different flavors and types these days, and generally they're full of easy to absorb carbohydrates, which is what you want. But a recent trend we've noticed with pro riders is we're increasingly seeing them go for ones with protein in. Now this has the added benefit of helping the riders recover and adapt to exercise while they're doing it. Over the course of a three week grand tour like the Tour de France, the small things like recovering a bit better can make all the difference. I'm gonna put a few of these in the bag. I'll put one of the protein ones in there and then a couple of these lemon cream flavor. My favorite. Next up is gels. Now gels are probably the most well-known and sort of, well, family fortunes top answer for what cyclists eat on the bike. They come in hundreds of different types and flavors. But if you're not familiar with what they are, they're essentially a very viscous, uh, sugary liquid that you can quickly slurp down, get it in your system, and it's rapidly absorbed and gets into the bloodstream to supply you with that glucose, fructose and sucrose and other sugar molecules that are in there to keep you fueled. Now there are loads of different kinds of gels. There's isotonic gels to help keep you hydrated on really hot days. And there's also caffeine gels, which are gels with caffeine in them. And the pros like to take these to give them a little bit of a boost, generally towards the end of a stage. And gels in general are something that they take towards the back end of a race or stage. They tend to start with more real solid food, so the bars and the other bits we're gonna get onto. And then when they really want that quick boost at the end, gels. I'm going to uh, put in this caffeine flavour one for the end of today's stage for me. What have we got here? Cola flavour and orange flavour. I'm a cola man. I'll have a, I'll have a cola gel. Next up is something that you might not expect, but it is something we see quite often in pro musettes, and that is a can of fizzy drink. Now, I, I am a normal sized human being. This isn't a a normal sized can. Just wanted to clear that up in case you thought I was a 
giant or something. It's a little 150 milliliter can instead of a normal 330 mil one. Although you wouldn't see this particular drink because I just picked this off Lloydie's desk and it's beer. Put that over there. You're more likely to see Coca-Cola. And the reason for that is it's a sugary, cold drink and the riders well, if they like the taste, it's good for morale. But you're not gonna see a normal sized can, and the reason for that is it's fizzy, and the bubbles and the gas, it can cause a bit of bloating, a bit of indigestion, which isn't what you want while you're riding a bike. But we'll put it in the musette. In many musettes, you'll find little sandwiches called paninis within the sport, referring to Italian, and they'll often be wrapped like this. Now, what they are is typically little sweet, well, slightly sweet brioche buns like this, no crusts, and then filled with different fillings. It is lunchtime after all. Now, Dan Lloyd's favourite filling, he tells me, was, well, peanut butter with bits of banana in, so that's what we've gone for, but chocolate spread is also common if you're feeling naughty, but also more savoury things, so tuna, ham, cheese, Whatever, anything goes really, whatever the riders like. So we're gonna put a couple of these in the musette as well. And while the carbohydrates in a little sandwich aren't as easily absorbed as something like a specialist energy powder, it is nice to have something that's a little bit savory and a little bit more solid in and amongst all that easily absorbed food and it's a bit nicer for the digestive system, especially over the course of three weeks. Next up, rice cakes. I've got some here. Rice cakes have become a firm favorite amongst riders in the pro peloton, and for good reason. Rice is a great source of carbohydrate. It's very easily absorbed, and it places very little stress on the digestive system and the gut of most people. It's also low residue, which means that for the amount of energy it actually contains, it doesn't leave much fiber behind in the gut, so you're not carrying the excess weight of that fiber that wouldn't otherwise be doing anything, which is crucial in a sport like cycling where power to weight is so important. I'm gonna put a couple of rice cakes in the musette, but before I do, we're gonna head into the kitchen and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make and wrap your own rice cakes. Now, gels and bars are a great source of fuel, but you wouldn't necessarily want to eat them all day, every day, for three weeks at a time. And, well, neither do the pros. I'm gonna show you how to make a basic rice cake recipe, which I learned from Nigel Mitchell uh, from EF Education First Draft Pack. Now, this is a recipe that I make quite a lot, and I really like the taste of it, and my friends like it too. It makes 20 cakes, and each cake has about 23, 24 grams of carbs in it, and is about 120, 130 calories. Right. Let's crack on, get them made, and then I'll show you the pro wrapping technique as well. I'm gonna need the GCN Capron. These are the ingredients for the recipe. First up, rice. Now, you should typically use a pudding style rice or a risotto type grain. You can use sushi rice as well. I've got a Boreo risotto rice, 500 grams of that. Some soft uh, cream cheese, 250 grams, just as it is in the tub. Some vanilla extract, some cinnamon, just ground normal cinnamon, some sugar, and some agave nectar to sweeten it. You could also use honey as well if you wanted to. I'm first gonna wash the rice and get rid of the starchy residue on it, and then what you wanna do is put it in a large saucepan like this, and make sure you've got a lid. To the washed rice, I'm gonna add three tablespoons of sugar. I'm using white caster sugar, but you can use whatever kind of sugar you want. I'm then gonna add a couple of teaspoons of cinnamon. I'm not measuring this, I'm just winging it. And finally, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. To the rice mixture here, I'm now gonna add 800 mils of water. Now try and be fairly precise with this. If you add too much water, it'll result in the rice being too gooey and too sloppy and it won't hold its shape very well. You then bring this mixture to the boil and then once it's boiled, reduce it to a simmer. It should take about 10 minutes to cook and it's important to put the lid on. If you've got a rice cooker, use one of those because they're really good, but 
it's not essential, you can just use a pan. But the reason why you've got to have the lid on is it helps keep the moisture in there and helps keep the water volume consistent. If you didn't have a lid, the water would evaporate and you'd actually not have the right amount of water for the rice. You can tell when the rice is cooked because basically all the water's been absorbed and the rice has gone nice and soft. So we can take this off the heat now. Done. The next step is to put the rice mixture inside a large tray like this. To the cooked rice mixture, we're now gonna add 250 grams of cream cheese. You can make it vegan, so you could use a vegan alternative if you wanted to, to normal cream cheese. We're also gonna add the agave nectar, or you could use honey, as I mentioned before. A Couple of tablespoons of that. Mix it all together. Now I've mixed it all together, I'm using a spatula to spread it out and just get it as flat in the tray as possible. If you've got another tray that you can put on top to kind of flatten it down and get it nice and even, that's quite useful, but I don't have one at the moment. <laughs> All that remains is to cover it with cling film or plastic wrap if you're from the States and then leave it in the fridge overnight so that it kind of sets. Fortunately, here's some I prepared earlier. Wait, it's, it's, non, it's not in there. I don't understand, this is how presenting is supposed to work. Wait, let me get this straight. You're saying I, I actually have to make some earlier in order for the to, to be some here's I made earlier. Is that how it works? Guess we're just gonna have to wait. I guess that means they're ready. So I've got the rice mixture out the fridge. It's now set and I'm gonna cut it into roughly 20 equal sized pieces. I'm just gonna wing it by eye because I back myself. But if you wanna be really precise, you could get the tape measure out. I'm gonna show you how to wrap the individual rice cakes. And to do that, you need parchment lined foil. Now you can pick this up from most supermarkets, but you can't use standard foil without the parchment on the other side of it. I've tried it, it doesn't work. So I generally cut a section that's about 15, 16 centimeters long and then fold that in two, cut that in half and each one of these pieces is the ideal size for my rice cakes. Take your rice cake, put that on the middle of the parchment and then you take the end and you wrap it like you'd wrap a present. So you fold it all the way to the end like that. Then you take the other end and you wrap that back over itself. And then you should have some excess. And then with that, you fold that over like this to create this lip. And this lip is really useful for opening the cake when it's in your pocket. And also you can write on it as well to say what is in this particular cake or package and just pinch the ends in like this, like a present, flatten them down and fold it back on itself. As mentioned, that is a basic recipe. A lot of the pros like salty, savory ones with things like bacon and cheese in. You can make them sweet, you can add nuts, you can add dried fruit like dates and raisins, whatever floats your boat go crazy. Now I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you'd like to head over to the GCN shop we've got these awesome Alp d'Huez t-shirts complete with Dutch corner nice and even GCN musettes and to watch another video about nutrition in the Grand Tours and what pro riders eat click on my musette.